Yeah, like, like at this point, when somebody would say something correct, it's like I found an Easter egg. Like, hey, guys, guys, ooh, two ooh, guys, I won. Right. 48 minutes, 18 seconds, true thing. Yeah, oh, okay, and uh, about this question, um, the, does the brain look like a... A neon sign made of vaginas? <laughs> as far as you guys know, is that true? Is that um? No, it's is that the, what a vagina looks like? <laughs> <laughs> you guys have girlfriends, skeptics. Wives. <coughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, except when we do Muslim movies or New Age woo flicks, at which time I should probably update the intro. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thank you. Um, but did I ever really leave? I mean, did I ever really? I mean, left, Ooh. right, back. Well, you're such a dualist. <laughs> Whatever. It's fine. And sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Noah has a pistol? <laughs> <laughs> oh, something about dueling. I'm excited. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? All right. We watched What the Bleep Do We Know? It's, uh, it's that classic tale of a deaf photographer with depression, mm -hmm. the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, <laughs> and clitoral priapism. <laughs> <laughs> classic, classic story, and uh, I probably spoiled it already, so I guess I'll stop there. Yeah, we've all it. heard that one anyway. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you ever fucked a yoga instructor while you were both high and your favorite part was listening to him or her talk afterwards while you tried to fall asleep, you will love this movie. It's 50% a woman doing an impression of a wrench falling down a well and 50% interviews with people who at any moment could smear their poop on the camera lens. <laughs> <laughs> that's the movie fucking amazing i gotta say i've been dying to do this one for a while right so quick personal story i first became aware of this movie before it came out in theater or right when it came out in theaters or whatever by i think it was an article on popular mechanics where one of the the scientists that they interviewed the one real scientist that they interviewed for this movie you know he didn't realize what they were doing with it he thought they were just going to do a documentary about quantum physics so he said real quantum physics shit and then they drop him right in between like some fucking woman who thinks she's channeling a thousand year old Lemurian spirit and a fucking discount Deepak Chopra and shit and have just the part where he says and things can be in two places at once and then they cut away from him <laughs> so that's all I knew about the movie and I was living with a, 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 some hippies in a commune type situation at the time and some dude brought over this movie and to tell you how hippie and commune it was he had to bring a DVD player with him so he brings over this movie and I tell everybody about it in the in beginning I'm like hey you know the quantum physicist that they interviewed for this says this, this is all a bunch of bullshit so just so you know in advance it's all a bunch of bullshit and I'm sitting here watching this movie with these people, and they keep looking over at me as they make the most asinine points, going, I don't know, I think he's got you there, man. Unfucking real So I've <laughs> wanted to go at this movie for quite a while. Um, now, had you guys seen this before we decided to do this movie? Or this review, rather? I did. My very well-intentioned eighth-grade philosophy teacher showed us this movie in a <gasps> real attempt to blow our minds. She was so <laughs> excited for us to think that not touching, you're never really touching anything. She, I remember we watched that part, and then she pauses it, and she slammed her hands down on her desk, and she was like, I'm not touching this desk oh, and everyone in the room was like oh and i was like you are though <laughs> yeah that's what we call touching is the electrical resistance that's created the fact that the atoms themselves don't bump into each other's kind of irrelevant but am i though <laughs> are, are you doing fission on the desk no it's <laughs> just relax but am i though the movie that's the, the whole movie. fucking thing i know is there anything you guys wanted to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at Oh, uh, I'm going to say worst use of uh, possibly the best actress we've had in any of the movies we've done. Probably, yeah. yeah. This right. was sad, seeing Marley Matlin in yeah. not... And to add to that, uh, uh, best worst random deaf person for no reason. Her <laughs> hearing... I'm going to make a lot of deaf jokes, okay? So you just get ready. And this is the safest jokes I'll ever make, because what yeah, are we going to yeah. do? Lose <laughs> listeners? Yeah, They're Hopefully. not hearing it. 
Fuck yeah. deaf people. They don't know. <laughs> We're don't not close casting. None of them are listening to this podcast. Um, but here's the thing. Her deafness never matters in this movie. It's just, they were just like, oh, you know what would be weird? Let's use a deaf person because like, whoa, right? It's like the, where someone has a dream in a movie and there's always a midget even, even though no one has ever had a dream about a midget. They're just like, whoa. Well, I, I dispute that last thing you said. <laughs> Well, but see, I feel like maybe like that was a, a strategic thing. They're like, we want a big name actress, but if she hears any fucking thing we're saying, she'll be out. We yeah. need a, we, oh, we could get a deaf actress and we could pay off the fucking translator dude to just, no, no, like make it sound like we're saying sensible shit. Um, Mini, are you sure? Because that lady looked like a burn victim. <laughs> no, trust me. It's all going well. No, there will not be any partying hormones anywhere in this. I don't even know where you got that, Marley. Um, how about the best, worst use of rhetorical questions that they have the wrong answers to? But do they, though? <laughs> yeah, well, right. Like, over and over again in my notes, my, my note is just, no, you're wrong, credits. You know, they ask the most ridiculous, are all realities happening simul... No, nope. they're not. That's... No, nope. we'll yep. just say reality. <laughs> That's how we... Yeah, I'm just asking it. questions the movie. Yeah, oh, God. All right, well, I guess I've been dying and ripping into this one since 2004, so we're going to take the quickest of breaks, and when we come back, we'll dive headfirst into all the quantum woo that is what T, capital italicized H, E, pound, dollar, asterisk, exclamation, mark, long, D, feet, a cursive, W, sigma, open parentheses, italicized K, close parentheses, pi, ow, and terabang. That's how they spell it. That's how I'm going to fucking say it. Dude, stop. Do not. do. Th- <laughs> really? What the hell? Heath, what's going on here? See, I told you we shouldn't watch What the Bleep Do We Know with Eli. He thinks he can walk on water now if he really believes he can. And that's what he's trying to... Don't... One more go. Here we go. No. Uh, Don't... Dude, that's not how we... Eli! (laughs) Eli! What? 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 I almost had it that time. I just gotta... I gotta believe. You did not almost have it. No, dude, that is not how it works. It's all bullshit. It was all... The whole movie was bullshit. Oh, that's what you say. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Don't. <laughs> for fuck's sake. Dude, did he have a sticker on his penis that said 12 inches? Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, he did. Oh, and um, and a tattoo. Um, and blackface. <laughs> I found a penny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess we've put it off long enough time for the breakdown, and I'm just going to say that this movie starts off by punishing you for wearing headphones and then proceeds to punish you for having eyes connected to a cerebrum. You get rid of the cerebrum, it's just lights. It's just awesome. Wow. (laughs) And I wrote in my notes, oh, shit, am I a Terminator? I hope I'm a Terminator. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this movie starts out like a caricature of itself, right? So you just see these weird bubbles popping out, and there's faces that'll just say, like, quantum mechanical, and then zoom away or whatever. Yeah, just one little thing. I hear the best science happens one tweet at a time. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, That's true. I heard that in a tweet. Yeah. Everyone streaming past you saying nonsense is actually a really good summary of this movie. So, hey, if you don't want to watch the movie along with us, but you do want to know what it's like, just tune into the first 30 seconds. There you go. You got it. It's just more (laughs) of that. Yeah, that's the whole movie in a nutshell. So, yeah, eventually one of these little weird bubbles pops and we find our way onto a train station where we will meet Marley Matlin, who will never be on Blue's Clues again. Burn that bridge, lady. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, this movie did terribly, but she never heard. (laughs) And she's uh, hopping a train from Portland to uh, Crazy Town, I yeah. believe. Yeah. <laughs> right. My, my music note here is, as you relax into this pose, touch the roof of your mouth with your tongue to close the circuit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, apparently, she's at a museum or a movie or something. Now, the way that this movie is framed, right, it's basically a documentary. It's a talking heads movie. But they interweave this meaningless story of Marley Matlin as the deaf photographer on Prozac or whatever to try to make it seem like you're getting more so it's going to be really confusing to try to break this down we'll just keep having to cut in with the talking heads and what they're saying but we we meet her going to some weird museum movie in the oasis or something yeah and um and based on the music at this point um i'm guessing she's about to come out and do some cirque du soleil stuff that would have been or nice. 
She's part of the starting lineup for the Trailblazers. It was one or the other. <laughs> and uh, she did neither. It was very disappointing, honestly. Uh, and this is where we hear uh, one of the talking heads say, have you ever seen yourself through the eyes of someone you've become? And I wrote in my notes, no, but if I carry you on my back, will you teach me the force? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Credits. Again, it over and over again. The first fully spoken sentence in this movie is, are all realities existing simultaneously? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. A <laughs> lot of the nope credits. Credits. Um, so, and, and then we get these like a series of out of context quotes about uh, about quantum physics, right? Some of these provided by sane people who kind of are telling true things out of context. Some of them are just completely insane. Um, and then we learn that if history is any guide, all the shit that we think is wrong. Again, right? Nope. Credits. Well, they're just asking questions, you know. They're it's right. the Jill Stein type of crowd. They're just asking questions, and I feel like they're missing a decent chunk of science there, aren't they? I mean, what's it called? Like on swears? Like there's like half of it. You want to keep going at that point. You started science. <laughs> But you didn't really go anywhere with it. You almost got to step one, yeah. So, and, and and to give you an idea just how bad the quantum woo is, in the first scene, bad universe Steve Jobs says, quantum mechanics puts responsibility squarely in your lap. What? Yeah, there's lots <laughs> of different sciences that really deal with how much personal responsibility you bear for them. <laughs> well, quantum mechanics thinks we're old enough to decide on the answers ourselves. He literally, I'm not making fun of him. He actually says that. I'm not making fun of him yet. You know, like, 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 like they're giving quantum mechanics human characteristics. I've expected somebody to say, quantum mechanics kind of likes to rub it into her tits when you're done. It's just yeah. kind of weird at that point because you're done. I mean, it just kind of makes your tits look gross. It was so sexy 15 seconds ago, but now... Just right. I wrote my notes. Up. I'm not going to tell you what the answer is because you're old enough to decide for yourself. Quantum physics slash a dad trying to gain his teenage son's respect. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get the title screen. You're like, holy shit, there was this much bullshit before the title? Wow. Right, and this is where we meet uh, the Diet Dr. Pepper of Deepak Chopra, <laughs> which is very surprising <laughs> because Deepak Chopra is the Diet Dr. Pepper Deepak Chopra. He wrote a book about sleep. I mean, there is no low. I didn't think we could go lower, but yeah. The point is that guy had no right to tell Trump that he hadn't read the Constitution. That's my point. And he, and right before the title credits come out, he goes, be in the mystery. And you can really tell that he was hoping be in the mystery would catch on. Yeah, right. And I wrote in my notes, stop trying to make be in the mystery work, Gretchen. <laughs> So and, and oh, so we cut to Marley taking a picture in the 1930s or whatever in a train station, and the VO is is saying like, you know, why are we all such a bunch of losers? Not just me, but all of us. Why do we keep screwing up our relationships and keep getting the same shitty jobs? Why do we all, as a species, forget to close the browser and let mom see the alpaca porn? I don't. <laughs> and why do we all see, keep getting the same jobs over and over? I mean. Probably has something to do with marketable skill sets. <laughs> what the bleep do I know? Yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> oh, shit, was the mic on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he explains to us that we've been conditioned to believe that reality is real. Can't imagine how the fuck that happened. I mean, he <sighs> is right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, and we know that's true because I'm not currently on trial for the things I've imagined about Channing Tatum, right? So that's how we know it's a good test right there. Yeah. And Marley has an external ear infection. Yeah. <laughs> well, right, yeah. She's only deaf because she tries to observe sounds and then can't... Well, wait, it's... It's something like that. It's complicated. Yeah. We'll get it. We'll get deeper and deeper into it as we go. And then we meet another one of our talking heads. I have him down as thin version of Eli in high school. Yeah, I have him as David Silverman's disappointing son slash Ben <laughs> Shapiro rollers. <laughs> I just had him as vegan Louis Anderson. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, and he's telling us about how when we stub our toes, it's because we want the because we decide to be in pain or something. Well, past philosophers believed that if you kick a rock, it's real. Mm hmm. That's that's also true. <laughs> But nowadays, I think we just trust that the rocks are real. Wasn't sure what point he was making. Not going to lie. Not sure where he was we're, going with yeah, that. We're, we're a slave to physical objects. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Seriously, if someone in this movie kicks a large rock as hard as they can without getting hurt, I will put that rock inside of me. That is my note here. <laughs> 
they did another uh, Patreon goal for us right there. Let me write that mm-hmm. one down. And then we also get another talking head who I have as a human porky pig chimera, and he explains that PET scans exist. Yeah, I have him as steamroller John Ritter. <laughs> <laughs> It's about right. Oh, no, that's who I had as vegan Louis Anderson. Okay, oh, that makes yeah. more sense. Right, right, right. Yeah, there exactly, we go. Yeah. exactly. Steamroller John Ritter kind of triggered it Not for me. Got it. Beer rollers, but, um, <laughs> but okay, and, and we were looking around this train station while we're getting all of these dumb voiceovers, and I just want to point this out because I was a street performer for a while. They, they, they show money just pouring into the street musician's guitar case. Least realistic part of this fucking movie. No yeah. way. And this- train station is fucking crazy there's kids blowing bubbles mm-hmm. a guy playing guitar a clown riding a dildo unicycle carrying <laughs> his father's casket it's just a nightmare and meanwhile marley who's supposed to be taking pictures with this 1920s camera from like a slave auction that she bought <laughs> she's looking at it like i have no idea what this is like if you if i stumbled into a camera in the dark i would be operating it with the same efficacy as marley is in this scene <laughs> And the thing that we're really supposed to learn from this scene, other than the shit that the people are reading off of the random Deepak quote generator, is that Marley is on meds for her anxiety. What kind of meds? I don't know. The bad pharma. Yeah, yeah, pill. exactly. Kind, Big what pharma kind. meds is what? Prescription M&Ms, as far as I can tell <laughs> yeah. by looking at them. Yeah, <laughs> It takes half the movie for us to establish that that's anxiety medication. For all we know, it could be a fucking antibiotic for something that she's got going on. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't know because the people who made this movie and the people who watch it just know taking pills is bad. Well, that's the thing is <laughs> if it had been an antibiotic, they would have had the same message. Right. <laughs> Which is terrifying, which would be stop taking antibiotics. Yeah. Right, right. Rub, rub some maple syrup in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do the trick. So then we cut to Marley showing up at home, uh, and we this is where we meet her roommate, who this movie would postulate that we should be more like. Right. <laughs> this roommate is every girl who you go on a first Tinder date with and she wants to like do a make your own cupcake class and halfway through you pretend to get food poisoning because I ain't got time to deal with that shit. She's fucking wearing pigtails and full pajamas. What? You're a full grown woman. <laughs> yeah, this is an adult hentai character. It was, uh, it was <laughs> some weird stuff going on. I had her as Astro Boy's little sister. She is acceptable only at Burning Man. That is the only time this person is acceptable to exist. <laughs> And this is also where we meet my absolute favorite of the talking heads, the German lady who's dressed like the sacrificial Star Trek ensign. Uh, Stifler's mom. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) Yes, That's her. Yeah, exactly. This is where the lady says that the camera has no judgment. And I said, trust me, the camera has judgment. It just added 12 pounds to your dead face. (laughs) (laughs) And this is why, like, oh, this is such a terrible analogy because she's talking about how, like, your brain is like a camera. And I'm like, no, it's not. And it's especially a bad... Uh, analogy for your purposes because the truth would actually make your bullshit better right because she's like you know is it possible that our eyes see more than our brains can consciously project it's like no it's the opposite of that your 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 (laughs) vision is like filling in all the blanks that your eyes don't see which would actually make your bullshit more viable so you got the wrong analogy and explained it wrong to make your job harder you fucking twat yeah. Right. To be fair, though, she's really building up to one of my favorite bits of woo ever, <laughs> which is the Native Americans couldn't oh. see Columbus's <laughs> oh, ships God. bullshit. Because I don't know if you know this, you can't see anything you've never seen before. Yeah, right, right. Well, that's why uh, all babies are blind. Yeah, it makes perfect exactly. sense. Forever. They're, they're blind forever. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That was actually the other one. That was the, um, the I have her as the lunch lady and the tie-dye muumu. Um, oh yeah that was hers and this she's the saddest fucking story in this whole thing because she's a legitimate science a scientist right she's the person who like discovered opioid receptors or whatever and then fell into woo and started doing all of this crazy shit and never helped society again i got really depressed when i saw her but yes they actually go through and have a flashback demonstration about how them engines could not i'm not talking about like that they didn't recognize them as threats but that they could not see physically were incapable of viewing big boats yeah right and this is done through a very very tasteful portrayal of native americans <laughs> the, uh, the washington redskins uh mascot is there and he uh pokes marley in the eye uh so poked by an indian which was my far less popular touched by an angel remake i don't know why that didn't take off 
Me neither. Seems like it should have. Yeah, and by the way, like I, I, I want to point out from just a historical perspective that when Columbus first landed in the New World, he learned, landed on an island, left, came back to that same island, and everyone had died of European diseases. So who does she propose this story was told by? Marley Madison. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were going from Matlin there. It's funnier that way, so I'm just going to read it that way. So then uh, Marley wakes up, and my music note is people in the Matrix are fucking. Um, <laughs> and we have this little flashback to her catching somebody fucking somebody or something that's going to turn out that was her husband, and that'll be, I, I guess, important, I, I, whatever. Right, which she has severe PTSD from that she will stop taking her medication for later in the movie. So, spoilers. Hooray! Also, my my music note for this scene was, here at the Alien Factory, we make green ooze. <laughs> <laughs> and then we co- we get a little more time with Eli Jr. And, and you can tell this guy's smart by the screensaver on his Commodore and the fact that they put him in a lab coat to sit next to his desktop. Yeah, this guy's a doctor. Hey, man, can you bring up a picture of a brain on your Windows 95 computer? We want to make you look real doctory. <laughs> Pretty sure he's got a shift at Dwayne Reed later, and that's the only reason. <laughs> oh, I gotcha. It. It's a pharmacist he's the one assistant. That was, yeah, providing all the meds they needed to get through this dumb shit. And basically, he just presents hard solipsism like no one ever thought of that before or whatever. And says, and, but, but, but doesn't present it as a mental exercise, presents it as reality. Like, he's like, no, there is no out there, out there. Yes, fucking yoga instructor pillow talk the movie. There is no right. spooniness. Wonderful. Eat Great. your soup, Brian. Just eat your fucking soup. <laughs> How can I when uh-huh. I'm hot? You're holding a spoon. You are holding holding a spoon <laughs> I can't even touch the spoon guys you did not need to bring your lab coat to this day <laughs> no more Halloween adventure for you <laughs> so so now we, we cut back to Marley and she is teasing the labia of her coffee cup or something yet yeah, so much of this movie is about to be a lesbian porn and then it takes a hard right turn into woo it's very disappointing oh yeah so so this is marley telling her fucking weird ass roommate about the dream that she had about the indian guy poking her in the head and the the, the roommate says oh maybe it was a a past life or a parallel universe marley says get real uh, mm, sorry, I hate to correct you. A little bit <laughs> oh, of pedantic. She God, says, "Goof, goof." <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't say "get real." She says, "Goo." She she goes for "get real." <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this was the first time that she talks out loud in this movie. And look, Marley's a really talented actress who's done some amazing work. But the fact that they were just like, "Yeah, don't worry about it. We're never going to explain this or talk about it. Just go for it." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, she she looked like perpetually lost, like fucking uh, Bill Murray and Lost in Translation or whatever through this entire fucking thing. Um, and, and also, this is just a minor thing, but when the roommate walks away, she goes, Amanda, you're such an asshole, or uh, hopefully we can escape the Eli impersonation on that one. She is Amanda. That is her character's name. She's not calling her roommate an asshole. She's calling herself an asshole just in case, you know, you were going to try to keep track of who these characters were. They didn't want to make it easy. Yeah, I guess you're supposed to choose through quantum f- mechanics or whatever who's who and speaking of her like saying oh get real about a past life or a future life there is a woman in this movie introducing this scene speaking through a demon that she is channeling yes. the movie can't say get real and then one of your talking heads is literally speaking through a past life they believe they have well but that's the thing though this movie is trying to convince you that marley the person who hears oh it was a parallel universe or a past life and says oh come on give me a fucking break is the bad guy it's only not a parallel universe because she doesn't believe oh yes we should be more like the pigtail jammy wearing fucking roommate amazing also of course they have to have the dig in the pills right because the the, the roommate goes well maybe you should try different anxiety pills and she clings to him <laughs> like a crack addict you know fuck you brianna <laughs> they're fine yeah so now it's time for more bullshit, this time with a fountain in the background. And this guy who's talking now is basically, he looks like someone stole his hair while he was talking and no one's had the heart to tell him. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
And he's talking quantum physics from the perspective of complete horseshit, right? They, they, they should say later that he like teaches at a university, but if you look it up, it's like he graduated from like Maharishi University and then is now their physics teacher or whatever. So, right. yeah. And the question he's asking is, where do particles go when they aren't here? To which I responded, to their other family in Des Moines, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I love to. They keep introducing these new scientific terms with, or without making any attempt to define them. That's a sign that you're trying to explain to people how shit works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is also where he says, "How come we can remember the past, but we can't remember the future?" Huh? Right. You ever think about how weird it is that we can remember the past but not the future? At which point I wrote. I can remember your future. You hit on a 19-year-old TA and take early retirement after <laughs> tweeting about how the wage gap is bullshit. There you go. And then, uh, also, a small thing here. We get another scientist come up, and he has tr- he, he doesn't open his mouth during talking. He's just clenched the mm-hmm. whole time. It's really it's like a physics lesson from Eddie Vedder with tetanus. And it's not a observe man. Cut my hand on a nail today. <laughs> She dreams in particles, she dreams in waves. <laughs> and now, speaking of observers, we come to the infamous basketball scene. She- yeah. Hey, Christian movie bingo, there's a magical black character in this movie. And bad sportsing. So this is yeah. a double. You get a double here. Um, so yeah, so she's just walking down the street and this basketball rolls in front of her and she looks like at it like it's a severed fucking head. And that, and there's a random little black kid that wants to play basketball with her in the magical basketball court of quantum physics. Right. Yep. And what that translates to is, uh, whatever you could do, you do in this basketball court, which thought out to its logical conclusion is just a, a basketball court filled with infinite possibilities of her in every single conceivable position. But this means that like she could miss or swish, you see, miss those, or those swish. two possibilities of how particles can align in a basketball court. Yes, exactly. And this is where they really, this is where your teacher paused because this is where they get into the whole, it never touched you. It's mostly empty. So nothing in the world is ever happening. You know, like, okay, okay, I get A and B. Let's right. back up. Right. And he uses this because he checks her in the chest with a basketball, which I'm just saying, don't check a deaf woman in the chest with a basketball. <laughs> she's got a lot going on. It's not the same as your buddy. And when she's like, ow, that hurt. He's like, oh, did it or didn't it? And she's like, it did. And he's like, all right, <laughs> well, step into my magic basketball court. We need some nonsense illustrated by me running in a circle. Uh, yeah, I mean, are we supposed to believe that she took the wrong pills or took too much? Is that is that what this is like? We're going deep into the anti-pharmaceutical thing here. But no, this is like their actual vehicle. They're like, all right, how can we introduce the fact that when you turn around, there's a hundred basketballs, but then when you turn back around, there's only one. What if she right. walks onto a magic basketball court, dude, calling it a day? Yeah. Well, no, this is real. I mean, every time you look at a basketball, you murder a cat. Is that the Oh, the I see. I that, I've heard that's how <laughs> Only it works. if you open it, right? Well, right, right. It's mostly <laughs> empty otherwise. So, and that's the thing is that, like, that would be as close to getting it right as they do in this movie. It, 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 it explains that physics work in both directions in time. Therefore, Back to the Future is a documentary. Fuck you people. Also, the music for this, like, mind-blowing revelation she's supposed to be having is The Orcs Are Coming. It could not be less appropriate. (laughs) I had I hope Legolas makes it in time. (laughs) This black eight-year-old is explaining Quantum Woo, and I kept expecting her to turn around for the barbarian with the sword is like, I've got next. (laughs) Are you guys playing one-on-one, or do you want to get shirts and skins going on? What's the deal here? I'm Raphthar. So <laughs> I'm normally channeled by Let's a Star go. Trek lady, but uh, today I've decided to come out on my own. And this, 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 okay, so we've talked about this guy a little bit, the discount Deepak Chopra guy that they got. This dude is incapable of sounding sane. Like, even when he says true shit, I'm like, no, no. If this dude ordered a sandwich from me, I would doubt him. Are you sure you want that shit on rye? I don't I don't think so. Is there rye or is that only your eye? Uh, stop. Get out. Stop doing it. You're cut off. I refuse you business because you're brown. I'll take the consequences. 
<laughs> it's worth it. Nope, it's worth it. That's the story I'm sticking with. I love to. They got this this one bit where this guy explains. He's like, objects big enough to be seen with the naked eye can be in two places at once. You can photograph that shit, and we can show you some of those photos, but we're not gonna because you wouldn't believe us. We know you. <laughs> and it would just be a picture of two dots. Well, and this- then he admits, he's like, and that would not be impressive. <laughs> And yeah, that, I think that's true. Oh, hold on, I'm going to check. Yeah, well, he literally... Yeah, yeah that's stupid. <laughs> uh, the movie's still stupid. The two dots didn't do it for me. Uh, but I love that we're now justifying our scientific theories with the use, the excuse the Koran uses for not making with the war angels. That's good to know. <laughs> So, okay, so now, like, we, 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 Marley's at a fountain or whatever, feeling depressed. We get more dollar store Deepak ramblings. And I have to reflect on the fact that his English is literally worse than the deaf chicks. Like, right. Really. And this is where we get one of my favorite lines in the movie. Uh, the guy whose hair was stolen by a bird, and again, no one's told him yet, <laughs> uh-huh. says, We've gone into every orifice you have to find an observer. Really? What? <laughs> Were there? When was the day where they looked up someone's ass for the observer? That's what I want. Where was the no- nostril day where they're just sitting around and he's like, "We should do nostril." Like, if we don't do nostril, and then in thirty years someone does nostril and the observer's there, we're gonna look stupid. We're gonna look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but now, amazingly enough, he uses this as a presentation that that there is an observer. Like, the fact that we haven't been able to find the observer proves that it exists. Well, it's because they're trying to observe an observer. Oh, that's... The that's problem. <laughs> oh, idiots. In all our subtle. observations, we've never seen observations. I don't really know how this breaks down, but I think it means that I have found the clitoris. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> I've found it. I've found all of it. Well, Every possible clitoris. Now, did you look inside the four-layered bio body suit? And that is not, by the way, a metaphor for the man in the boat. That is a quote from this fucking movie. Yeah. Ripley's God. Ripley's God. Oh, I think that's what that means. Yeah. He's talking about the body, but because he's a wooster, he can't just go inside the body. He calls it the four layers of the bio body suit, which again belongs in a sci fi movie, not a documentary that claims to be about fucking science. (laughs) Right. (laughs) <laughs> Un fucking believable. And meanwhile, in our silly little story or whatever, uh, Marley uh, comes across a bum and a dog and drops to her knees to take pictures of that real quick or something. Right. She's super inspired to take pictures of a guy almost petting a dog, a lady opening an umbrella, and a man sitting down. <laughs> no. At which point, because this movie can't even be consistent with its own bullshit, she hears her cell phone ring. (laughs) It rings not on her person. Right. It's in her purse. Yeah. Right. And then pulls out her Nikon phone, which has perfect FaceTime on the tiny little screen (laughs) and has a FaceTime with her boss. Yes. In the 2004 movie. Yeah. (laughs) On fucking real. And is if in and. Just to let you, this is just, we, that's just a tip just to see how it feels. This next scene is so fucking insane. We get a brand new talking bald guy, and he's going to tell us all about how they meditated all the murder out of Washington, D.C. Uh, right. And apparently they predicted they would be able to do this successfully ahead of time. They predicted right. exactly a 25% drop in violence due to meditation. How? How did they arrive at that estimate? Like, what does that regression model look like? They're just going, like, how hard are you going to meditate? And you, like medium? Like medium well? What is it? You got to pick one or the other. We can't do medium, medium well. Right. And there's this fantastic moment where he goes, you know, at the beginning, the police were like, that's bullshit. But by the end, the police were hiring a new meditation force. That's why every town and city in the country has a meditation department in their local police well, station. Yeah. Why the fuck aren't we still doing that then if it worked? Or bring in four times as many and bump Get, that up to 100. Yeah. Move on violence. <laughs> exactly. Dick move. Well, and I, I just want to point out, this actually is a real study, and I only know that because in 1994, the dude in this movie won an Ig Nobel Prize for that stupid fucking study. In 94, after they did it, the murder <laughs> rate went up, right? But then they retro-predicted that it would have gone up more without their meditation. That's really? how they arrived at the number, the 25% number. <laughs> Un-fucking-real. But what if all those meditators had been murdering instead, huh? <laughs> huh? Publish it as Evo Psych. They'll get it. 
And again, they, they, they take the most asinine, like you can't imagine how anyone takes this seriously claim and they stick it right next to the most mundane of fucking course claim. Like the, the, this one lady goes like, well, people affect the reality that they see. I'm like, of fucking course they do. That's part of being yeah. like, I'm not a tree. Everybody but the guy from Johnny got his gun. Yeah. And trees affect the reality too. Well, that's yeah. that true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess not consciously, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. If I didn't affect the reality around me, I wouldn't have to wear this ankle bracelet all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Actions have consequences. Nor would you exist in any fucking real way. <laughs> Um, so also this is where like uh, Marley is she's rushing to work because her boss just FaceTimed her about being late and she drops her anxiety pills all over the train platform so she misses the train yeah. and I just wrote that's how Big Pharma gets you <laughs> yeah she missed the train because she was busy picking up her poison am I right Jill <laughs> who's with me and the, the way she opens the pill bottle or tries to unsuccessfully it's like she's doing an infomercial on QVC for right. better pill bottles it just goes in. <laughs> like milk spills on her out of nowhere for no reason isn't making spaghetti Getty tough. Yeah. The, so <laughs> there's got to be a deafer way. <laughs> <laughs> and this is another, this is how they Safe c- cleverly <laughs> weave. This is how they cleverly weave the um the, the the next bit of this movie in right like they want to ex- present this new information this new scientific information so while she's waiting for the next train it just so happens that someone has set up a demonstration of this new woo science that they want to talk about yeah Liza Minnelli is giving a tour of the famous <laughs> pictures of water experiment the, yeah this is the water gets sad when you yell at it portion of the documentary about science. Well, the lady who, again, looks like Liza Minnelli got burned all the way at the end of (laughs) Arrested Development, explains that water is the most receptive of the elements. Of the four elements. The four elements. Of the yeah. four. Receptive to what? Sexual advances? I mean, I can see that because he goes right in and out again. But what is that receptive? Well, the other ones are wind, hydrogen, and oxygen. Those are the other three <laughs> yeah. elements. And compared to those, yeah. I mean, more yeah, receptive. The other ones are super right. obstinate about things. <laughs> water, wind and hydrogen and water, yeah. And the whole time she's showing these pictures, right, of these water crystals. She's like, here's sad water that's been dammed up. And here's happy water water that's been blessed by a monk and and apparently you don't even have to like say happy stuff you can just put happy words on the jar with the water and that will make the water happy (laughs) right so for those who are not aware of this fucking crazy town experiment a crazy japanese man took several jars of water wrote like i love you i hate you Hey, do you have, do you know what time it is? Are you going to finish that sandwich on different jars of water? (laughs) Then he froze the water because water can read Mm -hmm. all the languages and took pictures of what the water looked like when he put those labels on it. And that is, and so like the, the I love you water looks all pretty and the I hate you water looks all mad. And so yeah, 90% of our bodies are water. Therefore, if you wrote chi of love on your body, you'd look like a snowflake. I, yes. <laughs> and I, I just want to point out that like the way he obtained these results was by looking through the, the ice crystals until he found one that matched the thing. This has never been replicated, obviously. It's complete horseshit woo on every fucking level. And they present it like, like this is cutting edge science. Yeah, this is basically the science version of your little cousin pointing up at a blob cloud and going, "It's a dog." And you being like, "Holy shit, dude, you should publish that." <laughs> <laughs> Next up on our TED Talk is It's a Dog by Alan, 4 years old. Alan, go ahead. It was a dog. Fascinating. So, yeah, and so, and the, I guess the connection they're trying to make is they say, well, you know, the water knows whether it's happy or sad, and 90% of your body is water, which is wrong, by the way. They only get the fucking percentage right. Um, and, and in case you don't get the connection, emaciated Louis C.K. as a serial killer from a CSI episode turns and explains it to the camera in direct address. Literally the mayor from Buffy. Oh, is he? <laughs> Literally one of the characters from Buffy. Oh, no. Could not be a less influential... uh, He's not the mayor. He's one of the characters. But could not be a less influential or interesting actor. It's like they got the guy from Arthur, who's the florist, to come in and be like, Huh? What do you think? (laughs) Danny Trejo walks in. Makes a lot of sense (laughs) if you think about it. At this point, I was wondering why Marley doesn't just put on a name tag that says, I can hear. (laughs) But, man, oh, wow. Do I sound like... Have I been sounding... Guys, you should have told me that's how I sounded. I can 90% hear right now, I think. (laughs) That's 10% of my non-water body. Still can't quite get it. 
And so now the tight eye lunch lady shows back up to explain how thoughts can change the body with the help of rum the channel through jc knight and and like she's she goes goes to this incredibly long explanation about how your thoughts can change your body i'm like i just thought i'm gonna lift my arm it changed my what a fucking course what, what the hell are you even trying to say right music note here by the way someone just did something very impressive in cirque du soleil <laughs> <laughs> practically the whole movie uh music note wise <laughs> Um, but she, but then she extrapolates from the fact that when you think about moving your arm, it moves to you can walk on water if you believe hard enough. Yeah. Well, no, that's not her. That's the guy who raped the Lucky Charms. Oh, right, leprechaun. right. Yes, they. This is yeah. So we meet this Irish guy who raped the Lucky Charms leprechaun. Which, by the way, if you watch those commercials, as that leprechaun is just a rape victim running because he has terrible PTSD, <laughs> it adds a whole layer of drama to those. Com- I highly recommend it. See what I always do with those co- with those commercials say is I think about him with the ankle bracelet. And he's just trying to stay five hundred feet away from the kids. <laughs> Not touching the kids. Electrons doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> They're chasing me. They're chasing me. Come on, fuck this. The woodsman starring that leprechaun. I'm into it. <laughs> but yeah, he proposes literally if you believe in your heart, you can walk on water, you can do it. But but don't, because you don't believe enough. Yeah. yeah. Well, you just have to show the water a sign that says ice. Oh, and, I and see. Then you're, and then you're Tape solid to the water. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It won't. It won't stick. If I could get it on there, it would turn. But I can't. It's so receptive. It keeps sinking in. Put a post-it that says "sticky." <laughs> <laughs> so and then, then the ice thing. And I love how he even like back walks it back. But he's like, if you believed it enough, you could walk on water. But you don't. You don't believe it enough. Yeah, yeah I had to say that the other day. A kid drowned. <laughs> so, Not cool. I had to start I had plans caveating that, kid, that one. So uh, yeah. And then we get more uh, fucking Walmart Depok, and I'm just writing, man, if Eli kissed this dude, he'd probably turn into a prince. Uh, (laughs) But the the fun game I was playing with this was like, spot the real scientist, right? Because I knew that one of these people was a real scientist from a real university that was really talking about quantum physics, but I didn't know who. So as I'm going through it, I'm like, like I'm checking people out. I'm like, okay, we know it's not going to be (laughs) Rom as channeled through Jay-Z Knight. We know it's not tie-dye lady. Right, slowly people eliminate themselves. Yeah. Like a guy be like and i can move shit with my brain oh, okay good it's not okay him. he's off the <laughs> i got a funny feeling it's the guy that keeps getting awkwardly cut okay what about you ben Shapiro rollers come on you could just be a doctor who doesn't know better nope <laughs> no nope, not, not him. him not him no yeah he, he got almost all the way until he started into his god bullshit um so now we cut to the roommate hoping to keep the foot fetish crowd into this flick by dancing around on paint. Again, the movie would posit that you should be more like this human. It worked, the foot fetish crowd thing. (laughs) I kept watching. I wrote in my notes, ah, Quentin Tarantino got to direct one scene of this movie. (laughs) And this is where we learn that Harumi got her a gift, and no, it's not a vibrator. Like you said, it's constantly opening up lesbian porn and, and not delivering. Um, instead, it's the stupidest fucking gift ever outside of a four-year-old getting something from mom for Mother's Day. Yeah, it's a scrapbook of her own pictures. Yeah, that she took. <laughs> right, which would basically like, be like me downloading a bunch of our podcast onto a zip disk and giving it to Noah for his right. birthday. <laughs> Half the zip hey, disk is go. still full because I know you're going to make more episodes. Yeah, there's room because there's blank. <laughs> yes. She says, look, blank pages for all the pictures you're going to take. It's not that I didn't finish this stupid thing. It was that I was thinking <laughs> Get about- to work. Happy birthday. And and it should be pointed out at this point, Marley is playing this movie like it's a Holocaust biopic. Yes. <laughs> every, th- every moment she's like, this is the life. This is the life. <laughs> <laughs> So, and then we get her, like, dreaming about the sad water so we can do flashbacks to the things that happened three minutes ago. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, did, did they feel like the movie was too short at this point? That the two hours we were suffering through wasn't enough? Yeah, and Christian movie bingo, hey, remember two minutes ago in this movie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fucking, uh, uh. and uh, again, w- this is the fucking talking head scientist guy, he goes... At the subnuclear level of our reality, you and I are literally one. What? But try to parse some sense out of that fucking sentence. This entire movie is just sentences in need of justification. Yeah, and and all these scientists are very clearly just trying to 
fuck someone on the crew. Like, <laughs> science, sexy, smart talk. No, just uh, yeah, according yeah. to science, we're already fucking in another dimension, so we might as well. Uh, you know, up. they were doing this to people at craft services. Some poor guys just trying to set up lighting, and you got Ramtha being like, "I sense in you," and he's like, "Nope, nope, not when the cameras are off. Right, not when the cameras are off." <laughs> and now we get. Apparently, uh, Miss Piggy's husband is going to read us his <laughs> affirmations. <laughs> oh, my God. The guy who goes like, I consciously create myself every day. And for some reason, I keep creating a balding, overweight Steve Buscemi with the voice of Kermit's tracheotomy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? This is just swapping positive thinking for prayer like the statue in Indiana Jones. Just like, <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> It's a vision board instead of a Bible. See, now you can do it because you're mad at your dad. Good for you. <laughs> Blow Eli in college. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, that's everyone that I lived with back when I first saw this movie. So, and, and, okay, so now back in the little Marley story, we get her coming up to the boss, and the boss is checking out this blonde girl's ass. We don't know who this blonde girl is. All she's there for is the ass. And it's a spectacular ass, don't get me wrong, but there's no reason for it to be in the movie. They just right. needed to sexy it up, I guess. This is for the woman who needs a hearty cough. Like I spent the entire time just being like, <laughs> please clear your throat. But the uh, the red shirt who's about to get killed in front of Captain Kirk, yeah. <laughs> she's explaining that uh, addiction is just a chemical rush and that all it takes is one sexual thought for a man to have an erection. And I wrote, gee, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> And again, what a bizarre fucking example. First of all, she says for a man to have an erection in his member. I'm like, oh, well, I don't think we're talking about this fucking Heil Hitler sign or whatever. But <laughs> but 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 why use erection? Why not use twiddling of the thumbs or blinking or any other voluntary or involuntary action? It would all fit the bill. Yeah. And she says there was nothing outside of him. This is the amazing thing. There's nothing outside of him that gave him an erection. So I, I wrote, maybe check inside. You know, I mean, he's, <laughs> you don't know. Also, there probably was something outside. It's the booby that he just saw, the, the ass. That ass, know. yeah. That, that, I had an erection, but it, yeah, exactly, exactly. Caused by interior and exterior uh, stimuli. Oh, it's me, the food babe, <laughs> wandering here through this thing full of lava lamps. <laughs> That was that's usually it. Um, so and and Marley, by the way, is is learning that she's got to go photograph a wedding, and she's really pissed about that because she got married once too, and it didn't go so well, I guess. Right, and she hates churches, weddings, and guys. At which point, I wrote, "She gay? Is this? Yeah, I mean, she's is this a gay? But no, no, it's because she got her heart broken. If you remember earlier, she had the PTSD, uh, flight of the Valkyries flashback <laughs> to someone fucking someone else in her apartment. <laughs> she got her heart broken, and that's why she hate weddings." Yeah, and God, and religion, exactly. And because this movie doesn't have scenes or anything, I guess this random spot is as good as any to pause for a well-deserved break, but before we do, let me give act the rest of the movie the hard sell. Will we jumble forth on the width of understanding? Did the slithy toes gyre and gimbal in the wave? What the fuck is going on here? Find out the answers to these questions or something else entirely when we return for Act 3 of What the Bleep Do We Know? Hi, Doc. Sorry, a couple of questions. Was just mm -hmm. looking over this waiver, and it says you're putting a, a camera up my butt to yeah. find an observer? What, what, right. is, what does that mean? Uh, okay, uh, great question. You see, according to the uh, Heisenberg effect, the observation of a thing fundamentally changes it. So we were thinking we might find who's doing the observation if we put this camera in your butt. That, okay, that, that, that doesn't make any sense. I, I'm doing the... Ob observation i i am you're not gonna look up my butt and like find consciousness in my my colon well well we, we don't know that for certain y you see matter the way hey, the way dude, matter dude, works larry said that you bet him 20 bucks you could use quantum physics to get a guy to put a camera up his butt did you oh Fuck, oh man. shit sorry dude, you sorry uh, you ruined didn't it now didn't now i only won the 20 dollars just the one time what what oh oh yeah that that chopra guy didn't even ask a single question. It was like super, Ugh. super easy. Wow. What was that like? Um, well, you ever try to put the giblets in an overdone turkey? <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> but wetter. <laughs> <laughs> 
And we're back for more of these inane ramblings, and we're going to start off with Marley arriving at the church wedding so that the talking heads can crowbar in enough God talk to justify the review on this show. Right. And this is basically the every conversation Eli's ever had with a Unitarian Universalist portion of the movie. (laughs) But is God a candle? Nope. He's got a book. But (laughs) is that book a message? (laughs) <laughs> and the argument that they're all offering is, I can't remotely comprehend what God would even mean, which proves that God's really incomprehensible, but totally exists. Right. <laughs> the problem is that people think God is separate from us. But, what? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, what if God was one of us? You know, just a stranger on... Oh, okay. <laughs> you're just doing song lyrics now. <laughs> So stupid. And then, then they fucking propose the Lucky Charms person fucking proposes Jesus. You know, religion's done a ton of harm. It's killed people. It's terrible. Rape, murder, Mike Pence, all these horrible things. <laughs> but Jesus was probably talking about quantum physics if you what? think about it. And yes, they used the mustard seed thing that like, uh, like on purpose, like to make their argument better. Like the only <laughs> science to ever align with Jesus being right about mustard seeds is quantum physics in a good way. I mean, this yeah. in a good way. They're, they're, their, their, their proposition here is either Jesus was just wrong, didn't know what the fuck he was talking about, or he was referring to quantum physics in a very non-obvious way. Right. Yeah, it was probably one of those two things. Yeah, there's a or, whole book of formulas that got lost, and the Pope's got it. He just won't give it out. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I also love the whole idea that they're just saying, like, if you look at what religion has done, it's been really harmful. So let's keep doing religion, but better. It's like, well, what if we snort the iocane powder? Would that be maybe a? <laughs> The fuck are you right. even talking about? And this is where the red shirt from Star Trek goes. God must be the best. Really, the best. And I wrote, Donald Trump slash this woman. Yeah, God's right. going to be fucking fantastic. <laughs> We're going to make God great again. <laughs> <laughs> this woman's whole thing is, you ever been super high? People will get this. You ever been super high and you start to monologue and you feel like you're blowing everyone's mind because you're like, and I realize the sun will never truly set. And they're like, dude, stop talking over the movie. Yeah, <laughs> That's this woman's right. whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and this woman does not look like she should be talking about science. She looks like she should be like selling junk bonds for Slavic dictators or like on trial for doing that or something. Yeah, exactly. Well, also, I love to, at one point, she's like, she's trying to give examples of great technology, right? And here are her examples. She says, we have great technology like anti-gravity magnets, zero point energy. Fucking what? You could have used cell phones or something that really exists, but instead you just have imaginary science fiction shit. We've got jet boots and blowjob <laughs> robots. <laughs> right. Well, we do have blowjob robots. I, I, I know that we on this call have blowjob robots. I have robots. Amazon if, Prime. If I figure it would be here. Robots. Whatever. Existed that gave blowjobs, I would not be here right now. <laughs> what they have is they have a plastic thing that they call a blowjob robot. It's not a blowjob no, robot. You're- when there's a realistic blowjob robot, it'll be like cell phones. You know, <laughs> so when, when they had them first, they came out and they were car phones. They were the size of a fucking backpack. And everyone was like, those are cell phones. We we're like, fuck you. Those aren't cell phones. First guy that came out with the cell phone, cell phone, everyone had a fucking cell phone. That's how blowjob <laughs> robots are going to work. And I can't fucking wait. Can you imagine that? It'll come out at about the same time as self-driving cars. Two oh. birds, one stone. Mm. Whew, yeah, we'll be oh. doing a lot of touring then, folks. So, so now we cut to the <laughs> wedding. And in this wedding, They're just the circling husband... Denver. <laughs> <laughs> Can we use the tailpipe now? Let's use the tailpipe. Shit. Switch it up. My birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so now we get to the uh, to the wedding. And I just love, okay, the husband in this wedding is I fucking every woman that moves. Right. Well, no, she's having a flashback to her wedding where her husband, I fucked oh, everything that moves. I, yeah. I, I see. I, yeah. It's so obvious. Yeah. Now. She's having a, she's having a flashback, uh, w- which also includes her memories of the wedding march, which, I mean, look, I guess maybe she knew that it was playing. I'm just saying her memory has sound in it. It doesn't play out. <laughs> This is also where we learn that your brain is like a thundercloud and a thunderstorm. 
And it's a puzzle your brain is, so hey. hey. Yeah. Yeah. This might as well be like Seinfeld's doctor describing heartburn as lightning bolts in your circle area. That's how, <laughs> really? Comes down your tube. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, um, yeah, yeah. So, and, and I want to point out, I haven't mentioned this yet, but when I watched this movie, I found it free online, but it had Polish subtitles. And I feel like this was the crossover point where the Polish subtitles made more sense than the shit they were saying in the movie. <laughs> Just a backwards V, and you're like, I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like at this point, when somebody would say something correct, it's like I found an Easter egg. Like, hey, guys, guys. Ooh, ooh, guys. I won. 48 minutes, 18 seconds. True thing. Yeah, oh, okay. And uh, about this question, um, the, does the brain look like a... A neon sign made of vaginas? As far as you guys know, is that true? Is that um no, is that the, what a vagina looks like? <laughs> <laughs> you guys have girlfriends Skeptic. wives. <coughs> oh, shit. Yeah, no, I thought the brain looked more like the evil forest and wizard of Oz, but I like the pussy joke way better. <laughs> and this is where we learn that the brain doesn't know the difference between sight and memory. What? Yeah, which is why, you know, every time I think about a bear, I scream and run into the other room. <laughs> <laughs> He's following me. He's following me. That is like the entire precept of this movie or the, the, the argument that they're trying to make here is that your brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. Therefore, reality is imagination. This breaks down on every single level. Yeah, like there's no, there, there, none of the precepts work. The conclusion doesn't follow. Everything is wrong about that. Yeah, that is called psychosis. The not yes. knowing the difference between what's in your head and what's outside of your head. That's that's called a hallucination. Yes, it can be triggered by psychosis and or drugs and or both. Yeah, there's a fun way to do that and a not so fun way to do that. <laughs> Either way, it's not supposed to happen all the time. I understand many of the talking heads in this movie. It happens all the time because yeah. they should be taken. <laughs> Some of Marley's devil pills. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> you think Ramph is talking through you. You're not the baseline that we should be judging by. <laughs> <laughs> well, and at this point she says, all emotion is holographically implanted chemicals. Again, that can't, that's not even wrong. You're not even close enough to a meaningful statement for it to be disproven at this point. When she said that, though, I like pictured little Tupac chemicals doing a little music <laughs> duet with <laughs> Michael Jackson on the stage of my brain. That's probably what's going on there, yeah. But then and, my brain but, can't tell them apart. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell them to keep apart from the or keep far away from that uh, CGI hypothalamus that we see in this movie. Look like uh, look, that could be a danger. Um, look, 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 honestly, that it should be warning us that it's a trap. But uh, uh, according to this <laughs> graphic that they show us here, your hypoth your your pulsating hypothalamus is a little Lego factory that puts together little toys for all the little mucinex monsters that live in your hormones. Yes, this is where we learn that. When you're sad, your brain gets wired to be sad. Right. Yes, right. exactly. I had a truly reflective moment here because, like, I have depression. I've been on and off medication. I have family members who are on medication whose lives are saved by medication. And I just had this wistful moment of, man, I wished I believed I could just positively think my way out of it. Don't you? Wouldn't it be nice if it was just like, oh, man, I just got to train my brain to think happy thoughts. Yeah. Well, I think it's your peptides aren't erect enough. They're supposed to be like, <laughs> oh, okay. supposed, and they're kind of rapey, too. Maybe they're not. Being forceful enough. Yeah, we do see some, some fucking peptide rape going on here. And okay, so we're getting all of these. Like she, she's at the reception, right, for the wedding. And now the movie, just because it hasn't been insane enough, starts to show us these little cartoon amoebas that are supposed to be your cells, right? Like so, when you get like happy, it's it shows a bunch of little happy cells dancing around, and when you're drunk, all the cells are drunk or whatever, and that's what they're presenting as the reality of your universe. Yeah, yeah. So this and is the side effects of the meds, clearly. 
Yeah, um, and this is just totally insane because Marley is basically in the reality of this movie having a psychotic break. She looks around, she sees everyone as a pair. She's yep. taking pictures of fucking nothing. Her like cameras down at her side. She's just <laughs> randomly pushing the button, shooting at the, the flash yeah. going over and over. It's fucking terrifying. The hypothalamus looks like the inside of Zion when it was being attacked. <laughs> it makes no fucking sense. None of this. And at the same time, there are these very like cutesy cartoons running around that are supposed to represent our emotions yeah. like you have like you have a white blood cell a red blood cell and a lust blood cell is what we're <laughs> supposed to learn from this <laughs> shit I just need a transfusion of smiley yellows yeah <laughs> 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 right. That would do the trick. And look, at one point, the fucking idiot talking head says, like, each cell is alive. And I'm like, okay, so far, so good. So far, so good. And each one has a consciousness. Nope. No. Oh, you lost no. me. <laughs> you were so close. Yeah. Not oh. really that close. For no. fuck's sake. And we, the, like, we even have, like, like, the fat guy at the buffet and his cells are all getting excited and farting and putting on bibs and shit. That's how bad it gets. Yeah. And and also, it just in terms of damaging messages here, the message that they're basically trying to send is if you can't control your emotional state, that's your own damn fault. Right, because we get an interstitial moment with this woman whose cells are sad and they want her to be a victim. So she's like, her friend spills coffee on her and she's like, I knew this was going to happen. And it's like, oh yeah, the lack of positive thinking is why a liquid spilled on her dress. Yes. <laughs> And yes. it's really insidious. Like, these are the second most insidious cartoons I have ever seen. There, there are anti-Jew cartoons from World War II that are slightly less damaging <laughs> than these cells bumping along being like, you can think your way out of depression. I expected them to do a fucking stop taking your meds musical number. Uh, w right. Well, they practically <laughs> fucking do here in a minute. But yeah, they actually show it. Okay, so, so Marley is really upset. She's not having a good time at the wedding. And you know how the photographer that you hire for the wedding is supposed to have a good time right and enjoy themselves anyway so that's she, what's important yeah and yeah. and she's convinced that everyone's fucking everyone at this party so again it's just a psychotic break uh, also is the photographer supposed to be dressed like a baseball umpire is that what, <laughs> what you're doing for your wedding is that because that's literally inappropriate everywhere except a baseball field as i understand it <laughs> Heath, for the third time, you cannot wear a baseball I, umpire outfit to hat? my wedding. Can I wear the It doesn't chest matter protector? if the photographer's dressed that way. <laughs> <laughs> One other question. Um, at your wedding, is your color scheme going to be ecto cooler like this couple? <laughs> <laughs> that is, is that true. Yes, that is. That is. Okay. All right. Awesome. I'm awesome. Look totally reasonable. So, so Marley has to get away or whatever. So she runs to the bathroom, but the door's locked because there are people fucking everywhere in this wedding. Polish weddings apparently are awesome. So instead, she takes some drugs, and and then we get some bullshit about uh, from from Ramtha about how you can never really be in love with a specific person. Right. I yeah. wrote this woman sounds like she doesn't want to say I love you back, but she wants to keep fucking me. <laughs> Exactly. I love spending argument. time with you, Ramtha. <laughs> <laughs> and and then we get uh, Marley's little breakdown. She like stops the wedding, the music stops, and and, and everything, so that she can yell. I, I, th I think what she was going for is, "How can you not fucking see?" Uh, but, yeah, I wrote "How can I not fan a tea?" Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> Why? Well, that's the thing is like everyone. I mean, not to not to pick on her disability or anything, but like everyone at the at the wedding reacts like they just understood the words she said. Right. And the music cut off. Yeah. If this is a full wedding where people are screaming and talking, but the deaf girl talks and everyone's like, Borp. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they can talk. Yeah. So but luckily, Pee Wee Herman shows up to save her bacon. Um, and, and, and this guy is phenomenal. He starts trying to do like improvised sign language to her. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, hey, dude, they've actually got a codified system. They're not just sounding it out. They're not mimes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they don't just do charades to communicate. No. Oh, I figured it out, by the way. It's it's Quipkey from Big Bang Theory. That's oh. who that actor is. Oh, oh all yeah. right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. He um, should have gone with the, the weird voice thing. Anyway. <laughs> So, yeah, so, like, and I guess she had thought at some point that the groom was fucking some lady or whatever, and that's what she was having her breakdown over, but it turned out right. it was a different guy fucking one of the bridesmaids. Right, and 
because like sh- her husband fucked around on her so when she walks in on people fucking or sees people fucking nearby she just assumes that the groom who was in the other room like he would have had to magically teleport not that this movie makes any fucking sense but he would have had to magically teleport into room she just ran into right but instead but because like all <laughs> white people look the same to marley she was just like <laughs> my god he's cheating on you also he's president bill clinton why aren't you all seeing this <laughs> They all sound the same, at least. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so, oh, so who did who did somebody say that uh, Heath sounded like on Cogdis? Oh shit, who was? Oh, you know who they said you sounded just like the situation. <laughs> really? <laughs> Fuck that. They, they didn't know who it was or whatever. It was on some clip that uh, Tom and Cecil play. They're like, that guy sounds just like Heath. <laughs> They're like, that's the fucking situation. God damn it! So, <laughs> gonna need Frank to take, rip out some throat muscles Maybe or something. They'll get now. some STDs on the Jersey Shore. That'd be <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> it is a beach. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So then, this movie gives you the whole like, uh, you know, emotions aren't bad, you're bad kind of argument, where we literally see like that Marley can just kick her depression monsters away, the little mucinex monsters that that wander around her feet, carrying her depression, can be kicked away drunkenly, and now she's just fine. Yeah. Also, we learn every aspect of your digestion is based on your emotion. Every This is a quote. Every yes. sphincter that opens and closes <laughs> is based on the emotions. <laughs> what? I realize I had to have a good cry before I could shit. <laughs> I realized that. Yeah, I knew that. This woman talking has talked. She's She's been talking about nothing but orifices <laughs> this, for this whole movie. She's a doctor, right? She's the like uh, it was a, kind of a yeah. former. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She just had an orgasm, and then, again, she's having a really good time, but it's not, not also, going anywhere. We, we meet these two characters that, that, that serve no function in this movie at this point. These are the two little pussy hounds. Terminator the, teenagers! Yeah, right, right. <laughs> the, these two dorky teenagers come into the wedding looking for, in their words, foxes that like to fuck or something like that. Foxes who yeah. put out. <laughs> That's yeah, what fox, their yeah. computer vision is scanning for. Foxes <laughs> yeah. who put out. Yeah, with their... Atari Terminator vision, yeah. I've been sent from the future to get statutory raped. <laughs> I'm a neuropeptide processor. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and this is where they're like, you know, think about it. Some people are addicted to sex. And I'm like, no, not a fucking thing. And I, I want to go off on this for just a second because this, it, like, they keep saying like, oh, it's an addiction. You're addicted to these emotions like you'd be addicted to drugs. Look, addiction is not wanting to do a fucking thing. All right. When I was in college, I, I, I learned all about cocaine and maybe I learned a little too fucking much. And, and the idea that you're just going to take the, oh, I just love to go out and spend money and call it an addiction. Go fuck yourself. Go get fucking addicted to crack and then come back and tell me how it's exactly like you wanting to fuck people all the time you mean people don't sell their furniture for hugs <laughs> <laughs> as it turns out yeah and uh, god what the hell is this movie completely descends into insanity at this point too because we just end up with like people's mucinex emotion monsters leaping out of their pants because they want to fuck each other and stuff right and then they do a then everyone in the room all of a sudden has an IV and they do an <laughs> IV fucking bottle dance. <laughs> this, is like, this is like your third time on acid going wrong. Like you, you're all ready for it and then all of a sudden the, the little bubble mom- monsters jump out of everyone's chest and everyone's got an IV and your teeth are falling out. It's a fucking <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> And also, like, leading into this, by the way, they've got these little mucinex monsters doing an ad- uh, uh, addicted to love. <laughs> yeah. They're all, like, standing there doing a little musical number. They actually have, like, a, a, like a fucking quantum physics Robert Palmer polka monster in the... Uh. <laughs> Um, but then we we cut to okay so and and then while this is all going on by the way Marley the photographer at the wedding is getting shit faced yeah which again gave me the most anxiety out of anything in this movie I kept <laughs> I writing bet. things like my photographer won't do that I know where she lives I'll kill her cats <laughs> <laughs> so we get her we get her waking up the next day all hungover and I so wanted a naked mucinex monster to be in bed beside her you know. <laughs> We didn't get that. But at least for the first time in this movie, we saw her asleep in a position humans sleep in. And, okay, so so I guess, like, we're supposed to believe that she, like, stumbled drunkenly home and the, the Pee Wee Herman guy, the guy who was flirting with her, decided to, to, 
develop all the pictures she took? Well, she and was then the- slide them under her door. Yeah. yeah. And- like Robert De Niro and the fucking fan. <laughs> <laughs> Also, a uh, music note for her waking up. This will make all the girls at this party pay attention to me. <laughs> yes. Yes, we are definitely getting guitar guy at the party here. And then we actually look at the pictures for a second, and they're all just crotch shots of Marley Matlin. Like, was Elliot squatting between her legs for the rest of the wedding, like, helping her I, I take pictures? I think we pictures? were supposed to believe the little emotion monsters started taking them at a certain point or something, um. yeah. <laughs> And, and like, and again, the talking heads are just adding to the layers of nonsense, saying stuff like, our mind creates our body. What the fuck do you think you're talking about? Yeah. Right. Well, this is where we see her looking in the mirror, and because she feels uh, sad, yeah. her she has, like, a funhouse mirror effect. Mm-hmm. And, and this causes all of the happy pinks in her brain to get holocausted. <laughs> it does, yes. Yeah. I just wrote in my notes, run, pinks, run. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> they literally have peptides coming down like artillery shells and blowing these things up. It's so fucking insane. The fucking opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, I love the smell of peptides in the morning. Um, and, <laughs> and then it also says, like, uh, okay, so another, like, misdirection of real true thing. It says, like, all aging is caused by improper protein production. And I just, okay. Uh-huh. Aging no. is caused by getting older. I heard, I heard it was also time. Yeah, yeah that time is, is, is definitely a factor. The signs of aging, yes, the wrinkliness and all that shit, that is improper protein production. But obviously, that's not the context in which this fact makes sense. It's not that you can't, like, like if your proteins like were better at not getting old and thinking they were old, you would never get a oh, fuck off. Yeah, the solution to eternal life is not muscle milk. Yeah. <laughs> Just never look at a clock. Yeah, that'll help <laughs> too. Yeah, this whole fucking movie is your GPS suddenly telling you to go up. That's <laughs> the entire fucking spirit of this film. And and, and then we get it, it, this, by the way, is just to me the greatest red flag of woo bullshit when the guy goes, it's time for a course correction in our paradigm. Those words have never been spoken by somebody who wasn't selling you bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's <laughs> about to bring out Thrive when they say that to you. <laughs> right. Yeah, also extremely dangerous. Some guy just asked, does it even matter what we eat? And then long pause does not say yes. Yeah, right. In no way does he say it does matter what we eat. <laughs> no, because he didn't want to offend the breatharians that were watching this goddamn movie. <laughs> to be fair, percentage-wise, way more breatharians watching this movie than atheists. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them love this thing. <laughs> Quick, while they still can. Um, So, yeah, and then we get, like, we're supposed to be getting her uh, with depression, and it it includes a deaf person talking to themselves in the mirror. That seems weird. Maybe they do. I don't know. She's yelling at the mirror like Bob Odenkirk just botched a kidnapping. (laughs) I hate you, stupid (laughs) idiot. (laughs) Love that. Yeah, and I wrote at this point, Marley, she can't hear you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Shit. So she takes a couple more of her devil pills and then takes her anger out on the toothpaste and starts smearing it around on the mirror because that's what depressed people do. Um, And then we spend a long time like with her looking into the mirror as we listen to dripping water, everyone's favorite repetitive sound. Yeah. Uh, And then her reflection turns into the guy from Buffy and he's like, remember the water? (laughs) Huh? Uh -huh. Your Uh water. Well, Uh, (laughs) and we learn that she has depression because no one we we have to love ourselves and we have depression because no one has ever taught us to dream better. It, what? Dream better. Dream better. Isn't that nice? You just you didn't can... dream better. <laughs> That's why you've got PTSD, you fucking pussy. Also, it's just this tiny moment, but it's so fucking great. She goes like, I think you're beautiful. I think you're fantastic. I think you're God. And I wrote in my notes, too far. Too far. <laughs> well, that's right after she goes, no one has ever told you how beautiful you are. And I'm like, no, you're thinking of you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not a, a problem we all have together. Who's, wait, just quick show of hands. Who here has been told they're, oh my God. <laughs> I look like an old fruit roll up wrapped around a ham. <laughs> Guys, you got to <laughs> tell me this stuff. You guys are mean. That resonated with me this part. Whatever. <laughs> 
So, yeah, and, and also we learn very clearly at this point that psychiatry is bad and you shouldn't trust medical professionals if they disagree with poor man's Deepak. Yes, absolutely. We also learn that um, we can disappear, and then he clarifies, I don't mean we physically disappear, and he has to, because in this movie, you do have to fucking clarify that. <laughs> as for all we know, these talking heads do think you can actually just fucking disappear, which, by the way, is also an episode of Buffy. <laughs> I would say this movie is 44% Buffy-inspired. I, I would be surprised if none of these people thought they could disappear. None of the talking heads, like, I'm sure the majority probably probably don't but yeah and then this is where we learn that the true key to happiness is writing happy shit on your body with an eyeliner pen <laughs> and everyone in my eighth grade philosophy class oh did my. this it was amazing oh, really? <laughs> yeah and then i wrote mean stuff on my body and got called into the counselor's <laughs> office because i was test i was testing the system i was like arm fall off and i wrote that on my arm and i was like looks pretty good and i was like you're really negative and i was like man this is going to pay off in 18 years. <laughs> I'm going to have such a good joke. So, yeah, she's she's drawing hearts on herself. And apparently this movie would tell you that that is the same as taking anxiety medicine, just cheaper. Yeah. I mean, we should start a test. Look here. I'm sure some of our listeners take depre- antidepressants. Go off your medication. This is an official <laughs> no. recommendation. Of white white powerful movie. Movie. About and this. start drawing hearts on you. And let us know how it goes at No Illusions. Let us know how it works out for you. Or let your less next of kin let us know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, it exactly, exactly. Pause for yeah. legal disclaimer here. <laughs> and by the way, Andrew, also- Andrew, go. <laughs> and uh, by the way, she also draws I love you on herself. Mm-hmm. But that needs to be backwards for the mirror in my that, That's going to be confusing every time to the well, universe. Water what, can read backwards gonna... and in can all it? languages. Yeah, yeah, because it has to be able to, re- to read the up-down languages and shit. It's, it's, it's complicated. It's homeopathic. Oh. Um, also, by the way, depression and everything is TV's fault. It just randomly, for no reason, one of these guys comes up and goes, also, TV is bad. Like, right. oh, and get off my lawn? What the fuck is coming right. next? <laughs> uh, and this is where Leatherface explains to us that if we can change our mind, we can change reality, which is hard to believe from someone who looks like they're actively being ca- turned into a cartoon pig by a witch. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Like, if I was like, I can change reality, and you looked at me, who I look like a shaved Harambe, you'd be like, mm, I don't believe that guy. <laughs> well, and also to have that dude say... Beauty is an unobtainable goal. <laughs> Again, not for everybody, but for, for you. you. Yeah. For you, dude. <laughs> it's impossible to touch your toes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what that penis is because you've never seen one. <laughs> this is also, we learned that we're the only planet that has religion and <sighs> there is no right and wrong. So, lick Ray Comfort? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got out of that. That does not mean the right board is getting thrown out. So, okay, so at first when I saw this, I didn't know who the fuck this woman was, but she's like, of all the planets, this is the only one with religion. And I'm like, that we that we know of, it's also the only one with fart. What, what the hell are you talking about? But of course, we learn later that this woman believes that she is channeling a God spirit that has been to all the other planets with life and is telling you the difference between those planets and ours. And I feel like you should open with that, right? If you're going to give advice, you start by saying you're channeling a god that's been to all the other planets. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) I can see why maybe this movie buried it in the credits, but yeah. (laughs) And like my notes at this point is, how is this still not over? I mean, is there more bullshit that you could possibly fucking heap onto this? And yes, and even more dangerous before it's over. (sighs) <sighs> we also learned that God is the water and we're the fish. Yeah. Uh, at which point I wrote in my notes, God is a DJ, life is a dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, God, as it turns out, is a superposition of all the spirits from all the things. And since superposition is a real quantum word, that sentence is true. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, God is gaps. Cut. Cut to somebody else. <laughs> no, cut no. To, <laughs> we know. need a different. <laughs> New fake scientist. <laughs> this movie is a stupid person's Facebook post filmed on fucking <laughs> real so we can tell we're getting to the end now because now we come back to the train station where the whole thing started and grown-up piggy from lord of the flies has given us more of his Stuart smalley wisdom 
You know, this is where he starts going like, each day I ask God to confirm my bias, and he does. To, so all the quantum possibilities actually don't matter because God is observing everything. Kind of deflates the whole movie here with this whole <gasps> well, religious I, thing at the end. I love, too, that they constantly throughout this movie, they, they take the whole observer concept and, and act like it has to be a conscious observer, right? Like the reason the basketball thing is wrong, right? When she turns around and there's a hundred basketballs, all of the atoms that are interacting with that fucking basketball are acting as an observer at that moment. But they act like there has to be a conscious observer and it never even occurred to them that that part was wrong. Right. Guys, I've checked in two of my orifices for an observer <laughs> while we were doing this recording, so gonna side with the million basketball black kid. Sorry. This movie told me I could get 27 basketballs in there. I don't know. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and if you're picturing Heath and I playing Chubby Bunny with basketballs, you are the listeners I know and love. It's it's okay. It's okay. They're mostly empty. It's your uh, turn now. So <laughs> <laughs> I already went. But it never <laughs> touched you. Um, so, so yeah. So when you want stuff, that's quantum mechanics in action. That's the key. If you if you need quantum mechanics in in a nutshell, it's when you want stuff. And we and we cut to Marley in the bathtub being happy and clearly about to masturbate. I'm, I'm writing in my notes. Okay, it was not worth the wait, but at least they give us that, and then they don't give us that. No. Nope. Like the whole fucking scene is about loving yourself and then she doesn't fuck herself at the end. Fuck you people. It's true. Instead, we cut back to her at the movie theater slash museum slash stairway where we realize that all of this has been leading up to what if I had worn a red jacket instead of a blue one? <laughs> <laughs> These are the deep cosmic questions at the end of this movie. <laughs> but no, they just all meld into her like Jet Li's the one. <laughs> right right yeah they're, they're, she's walking around and everybody is marley matlin like a buster keaton short except not entertaining yeah she's um, in the malkovich malkovich universe yeah right <laughs> do you ever wear god's face as a skin mask no <laughs> I would you i'd wear me I'd wear i am me. can i be much more than more no you can't that doesn't make sense and this is a phenomenal moment. So they ask all the idiots now what the point of life is, right? You can tell that that's what they've been asked. And mm. this guy's answer, who we haven't talked about yet, bald on the top, beard on the bottom. Yeah, the guy who looks like skinny desert Matt Dillahunty. Right, right. Yeah, yeah he, exactly. He looks like Matt Dillahunty got trapped inside a sauna. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And he says, they're all answering this, what's the important part of life or what, why are we here? And he says, we are here to infiltrate space, <laughs> to acknowledge the quantum self. <laughs> yes. I wrote, these are the worst life goals ever. <laughs> to occupy space. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it, guys. I'm crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we're all supposed to become gods. We, this is boot camp for gods that we're doing right now. <laughs> right. I guess God's quantum proteins are getting all fucked up, so we need to <laughs> replace them. Well, you see, we can be like Buddha or Jesus, and I wrote in my notes, ooh, can I be like Buddha? I like his thing better. I mean, the selling your kids into slavery thing, but just saying, between the two. <laughs> I yeah, like, choose. I want the Jesus abs and everything else like Buddha, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at one point, like, somebody says, like, uh, the point of life is to find new elsewheres of thought. I'm like, that's such bullshit, my spell check called you on it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you mean, duh? <laughs> paperclip shows up it looks like you're full of shit um so yeah so she now now that she's quantum free i guess she she goes to sleep on a park bench in the middle of portland yeah uh least realistic what? part of the movie for me uh marley matlin goes to sleep on a park bench and doesn't wake up covered in homeless cum yeah <laughs> <laughs> right, or at least like pickled or something. She's important. <laughs> well, that's this movie's postulation: is if you're sleeping on a park bench, that's a sign things are going right for you. Yeah, <laughs> everyone in this movie calls yoga a practice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So so she wakes up on the park bench unharmed and uncovered in homeless sperm. Uh, well, the and, and this is where I guess she has the realization that she doesn't need those damn devil pills no more. Right. And in a final act of fucking dangerous advice, because up until now, the movie's sort of been hinting at the, like, anti-pharma thing, but in a final act of, we want to make sure we fucking kill someone with this movie, <laughs> she sets up for a basketball shot, throws her pills at a trash can where it magically transforms into a basketball, 
goes into the garbage and she is free of her medical condition. Yes. Yeah, and she can now whip the uh, magical quantum black kid's ass at qu- at uh, basketball. Yeah. Because so, we see that. It, w- it would have been better to have Eli fuck away her depression. That would have made more sense here. <laughs> yeah. For several reasons. <laughs> Not the least of which I would have gotten to shoot that scene. And then yeah, right. And then we we end the movie with the kid with a with a black kid asking, you know, he's like you never answered my question. Um, probably because I'm talking to you and you're deaf, but whatever. <laughs> How deep down this rabbit hole do you want to go? That's yeah. actually what the underage kid says to her. And right. butt stuff. That's what that's he said. butt We're stuff. About it's got to be butt right. stuff. That's my new pickup line. Uh, <laughs> crazy <laughs> billionaire money. Hole. I remake this, but instead of the like, woo, what the bleep do we know? It's just the words butt stuff in the same what the bleep do we know <laughs> font. <laughs> and then the credits come up. <laughs> But stuff thinks we're old enough to make the decision ourselves. But stuff puts the <laughs> puts the responsibility square in your lap. Yeah, I like it. I like Drink it. Drink this bottle of water that says butt stuff on the side. <laughs> Perfect. Oh man, I'm gonna write butt stuff on a bottle of water and then take a picture, it'll turn out like goatsy. Yeah. <laughs> Google that. Yeah. Google that and show it to your kid. Don't look at it first though. Just Google it. Show your son. <laughs> I was thinking Show your about son and ask him to describe it to you. <laughs> I was thinking about writing butt stuff on my wife's back while she was asleep or something. You know, just hey, it might work. It might work. <laughs> I have never more deserved a cookie in my fucking life, y'all. That's the end of this stupid goddamn movie. And, and of course, okay. So in a normal documentary, the practice is when you first meet a talking head at the bottom, it'll say, you know, so and so, professor of such and such at such and such a university you've heard of, or something, you know, author of the whatever. In this stupid fucking movie, they have to save all that shit for the end in hopes that you'll turn it off before you start seeing the actual credentials right, of these because people. Because if they showed these people's credentials when they first appeared, you would turn this movie off because they're prof- chiropractor. Yes. <sighs> that was one of them. scholar at the Institute of Noetic Science. Jeez. <laughs> Look that one up on Quack Watch. Yeah, and professor of physics at some made-up bullshit yoga school. It was, it was the Maharishi University of Management. He is the professor of physics at the Maharishi University and of Hogwarts. Management. Hogwarts, great. Right. One of them is just an anesthesiologist. <clears throat> right. Talking about quantum mechanics. And the, 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 the fucking leprechaun guy was a professor of theology. Right. Yeah. And of course, the, the, the king of all of them, and we've hinted around about it quite a bit, is Jay-Z Knight. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They do not credit her as Jay-Z Knight. They credit her as Ramtha, the 35,000-year-old <laughs> Lemurian warrior spirit from Atlantis. Lemurian and from Atlantis, guys. Anyway. And, and and apparently Ramtha has the voice of a middle-aged lady trying to fit in at her first Ren fair. Yeah, well, actually, she tones it down. If you go on YouTube and look at her other stuff, oh, she yes. usually does like this. Much. <laughs> like like Ramtha talks like a computer from like the Weimar cinema era. But she she toned Ramtha down because this one was a serious documentary. You see, this one right. Was- <laughs> some real shit also it's just a tiny thing and it's not as good as Ramtha but Fred Allen Wolf the guy whose hair got stolen yeah um or no he's not the one that got no no stolen. no he's a, yeah right he's the guy who wrote the yoga of time travel yeah. Fred <laughs> Allen Wolf is listed as an independent physicist yes! which what? just means not peer review well yeah yeah exactly I am an independent <laughs> physicist <laughs> We're all independent physicists, chiropractors, and Reiki masters. There's also a graduate student who's just there for the pizza, very clearly. Paid, to be honest thing. And he has to admit he's a graduate yeah, student. Yeah, he's like, I end. don't actually have any. I'm going to, though, hopefully. Someday, someday. if I work hard, maybe. <laughs> Probably this movie won't help. No. <laughs> I can't get this expelliarmus right. You said I had right, to defend but... my thesis, not my IMDb page. God. <laughs> Well, obviously, we don't have time for all the .000 stuff it would take to rate this movie on a numeric scale, so I'll save you the trouble of figuring out the scientific notation and simply ask you this. What is the dumbest pseudoscientific claim you've ever heard that's still less dumb than the thesis of this movie? Uh, God? God of the Bible? Is that pseudoscience? <laughs> I, I less dumb I, than this less? movie. Uh. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Wi-Fi hurts toddler brains. <laughs> if no you're just B-D-D. asking questions. <laughs> no A-G-B. No A-G-T. Y-M-C-A. 
<laughs> and while that does it for our review of what the Cuber profanity do we know, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to get you all swimmy over next week's show. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. The passion of the Christ. Live. Yeah. Live. With yeah. as much visual humor as I could have put in <laughs> Fuck you if you didn't come. <laughs> I did so many visual bits. And so as many of you know, of course, we did record this one, uh, this episode before with the side babe, and then the, the, the audio was all fucked up, so we had to redo it. We're actually recording this a couple of days after the live show. Live shit takes a lot longer to edit, so you'll hear this one first. But yes, yes, it, it was a phenomenally good time. And you'll, we didn't get any video of it, but you'll at least get to hear it and hear all the fun that you missed out on next week. You, like you want video? Super funny you come to our live now. tour when we take it around the country next year. There you go. Yeah. There you, you take go. the video. So with all that to look forward to, we'll bring episode 52 to a merciful close. Hey, Once it's our get- one-year anniversary. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. The, the live one show year. is actually the day of our one-year anniversary there. <gasps> all right. Hey, it's, it's almost we should like do I special it sex way. stuff. <laughs> all right, it's me, the feed babe. I'm hey, here dude. with a clone of myself, and we both want someone to teach us Diablo and how to balance stuff on the back of our hands. Oh, if but only th- someone could balance stuff just on the back of their hands. <laughs> I feel like we should have something new, though. You know, it's anniversary. <laughs> we'll come up with something. It'll I'm be tough. I'm sure we can. Well, once again, huge thanks to all the Patreons that help make this show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us out a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoy this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following the links to the show notes for this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. The old lady at the wedding got double teamed by those two teenagers in every different superposition. <laughs> they were looking for that observer. Marley Matlin eventually admitted she only made this movie as a fuck you to people who can hear. <laughs> Amanda killed herself because she went off her fucking meds. No shit. And you just saw a ghost. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> um, so I just want to like just remind you guys: this show's coming out before the live episode, so no callbacks to the live episode yet. Okay, Let's see if we can follow that rule. So Heath, tell. So sorry, I'm I'm actually gonna cut that anyway. So I meant to just mention that to you guys before we started. Recording, <laughs> gotcha. So I was trying to sneak it into the script there. I'll future callback. Don't tell me not to future callback. <laughs> <laughs> I future callbacked on last week's you game. You did? Yes. <laughs> to a different show. Yeah. To this to episode. This. Yeah, call exactly. Forward it's to we now. haven't even recorded yet. <laughs> but was it a call forward or was it happening oh, simultaneously? Oh, yeah. No shit. Physics worth, works both ways. Oh, I need a black kid with a basketball. <laughs> I'm looking for someone to shoot. I, I'm it's going not to about get the, the fucking quantum. whiteboard again, man. It's all a flat circle. <laughs>